Hello, welcome to Chemical Thermodynamics. This will be part two of our discussion in chemical thermodynamics, and this time we're going to look at entropy. So entropy, kind of an interesting idea. Um, what it is, it's just simple randomness or disorder, right? Um, so I can um, illustrate for you with a, with a sweet little drawing of my own that I have um, mastered myself, got some different colors in here. So let's say that this is uh, some kind of particle or something, right? So entropy would tell us that what happens is that that, um, to, you know, if that, that gets spread out evenly, right, like this, there's an increase in entropy. So the entropy is actually the idea of just increasing disorder. I don't know what word that was I spelled. And so when we look at uh, different states of matter, we've got solid, we've got liquid, we've got gas. Um, and so a solid has all those things neatly ordered right next to each other in fixed locations, and a liquid um, doesn't. They can move past one another, and they've got more kinetic energy. So a liquid is going to have a higher state or uh, higher entropy. So entropy is going up in this case, right? And so as we go from liquids to gases, entropy goes up even more. And so in the states of matter, as we go from solids to gases, we have an, an increase in entropy. So that's uh, phase changes right there. Uh, we just covered that. Um, let's look at uh, some of these other ones. So dissolution, of course, dissolution is like the idea of you have salt and you dissolve it in the water and it breaks up into your chlorine and sodium ion, right? So obviously this molecule, all nicely neat and ordered together now, is broken up, and so the increase in entropy is there. Um, it actually takes heat to do that, so the increased entropy actually overpowers enthalpy in that situation. We talked about that in the last video. Um, so here's some other ones, and these are kind of the classic what causes um, entropy to increase situations. So an increase in gas molecules, so look at, uh, we have ammonia gas right here, is going to turn into one nitrogen molecule and three hydrogens. So we have an increase in gas molecules, so we have two right here, and then on this side we have four. So a big increase in gas molecules, increase in entropy. Temperature, of course, making stuff move faster is going to cause more disorder. Order. Volume increases, you know, what if I had a bunch of particles in a little thing like this, and what if I just change the volume, right? Look at that. So all those particles that used to be all smashed together are now way spread out, a lot more disordered, a lot more random. In that case, uh, more space in between them. So increasing volume is going to cause an increase in entropy. Uh, increase in particles, right? Let's say that I just uh, took a hammer. Um, this is my hammer. I'm going to draw. Oh, i got to have a little bit. And um, let's say that I had a rock, and I went, okay, right? Now I pulverize my rock with my hammer, so I got all these parts and pieces. So it's an increase in, in, in particles. This was one particle I smashed down to thousands, right? So that's going to increase entropy. Uh, mixtures, right? So let's say that I have a balloon. Uh, here's my balloon right here. Let's say it's, it's full of helium. Let's say I pop it, right? Right? So it goes out. Now the helium is going to go out, and it's mixed up evenly with uh, the atmospheric gas, right? So now that that helium is a part of this bigger mixture. So we're talking about mixtures formed. So this was all concentrated in this, uh, in this uh, balloon right here, and now it's randomly mixed up with all these other uh, gases. So that's an increase in entropy as well. Molecular complexity is a little bit kind of uh, less intuitive, but here's the idea. Let's say that I had a hydrogen molecule, it's got two, and I was comparing that to an ammonia, right? So both of these, maybe they're both gas. Which one has a higher state of entropy? Well, this one is actually going to have a higher state of entropy than this one. So I could say this one is greater than this one. Now, the reason for that is that you have more atoms here, and so you essentially have on whole, as a whole, you have more movement, right? Because we know that atoms are always moving. Um, so even though it's within this molecule, there's more movement, which means there's more possibilities for randomness just because you have more things moving than you do here. Because there's more possibilities for more randomness and disorder within this one, the higher or the more complex the molecule, uh, the higher the entropy, right? So the change in entropy goes up. Um, let's look at... Uh, the laws of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics you're probably somewhat familiar with, and this is the whole idea that um, 
Entropy increases overall during a spontaneous change. So spontaneous changes are changes that are going to happen on their own no matter what. Now some of those changes that are a little bit more confusing, it's kind of like, um, what if I have a system um, and the formation of living organisms is a, is a good example of this. You have a system like a cell, um, and so within this system, uh, what we see is we actually see a decrease in entropy, right? Because this is a very ordered system. Cells have very ordered parts and everything like that. Well, uh, what about the surroundings? So in order to make that cell, what had to happen to the surroundings? Well, it had to have pieces from here, pieces from there, this taken apart, that taken apart in order to make that. So actually, so then the surroundings would experience an increase in entropy needed to make this system, right? And so overall, there's always going to be a net um, increase in entropy. So what we could say is that if um, you have the entropy of the universe, and this is in the universe as a whole, not just, it can only be as the whole universe goes, not just looking at Earth, because Earth is not a closed system. So in the universe, um, the entropy is always going to be greater than zero, right? Because it's always increased. So the idea is that there's always going to be a net uh, change in this direction. So whatever decrease in entropy we saw here, it caused a net increase in entropy from all the surroundings. Um, so we also have the third law of thermodynamics. And this is also very simple. You know, laws are kind of no dust how it works, but if you guys understand the idea of um, Kelvin, Kelvin measures absolute zero. So we have the Kelvin temperature scale that measures that, right? And um, at absolute zero, well, that means actually, what absolute zero means is zero entropy. Um, there's no randomness, no disorder. It's perfectly still, essentially. Um, and so, um, what that also means is that as you increase temperature, you increase entropy, right? If, if it's zero at zero degrees, well, every degree adds entropy. And then when you get to a phase change, you have a huge increase in entropy because at a phase change, you know, you've got like the molecules then separating from each other and becoming uh, further apart, more random and higher kinetic energy. So I'll give you a, an example of how that works right here. If we have entropy on the y-axis and temperature on the x, as we increase temperature, we're gonna you know, slowly increase our entropy. Now when we get to this phase, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a sharp increase in entropy because all the temperature, all the energy is gonna go into changing this from a solid to a liquid. And then um, you notice that when we go from a liquid to a gas, there's even a greater increase. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, and look at that just in the uh, sense of a problem real quick. Um, let's say that I have, um, let's see, let's say that I have, um, let me look at this real quick. We've got uh, 18.4 uh, grams of aluminum, okay? Um, and let's, let's, let's talk about it going from liquid back to the solid. So we want to say um, aluminum going from the liquid back to the solid state. So to calculate the change of entropy for a state change, it's actually going to equal the energy of the reverse reaction divided by the temperature. Um, so how would we figure out the energy of this uh, reaction right here? Well, what you do is you just look up the heat of fusion. Um, so the standard uh, heat of fusion is going to be an easy number. Just look up in the back of your book. And the heat of fusion is the energy right here. What they're doing is they're, they're calculating the actual amount of energy it takes to go from here to here, back and forth. So the, the heat of fusion for this particular one um, equals, um, what is it, 10.7 kilojoules per mole. So it's 10.7 kilojoules per mole. Um, let's just go ahead and uh, plug that in so we can find our, our, our actual change in entropy. So 10.7 kilojoules per mole, we have grams right here. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take that 18.4 and we're going to have to turn that into moles first. So divide by the molar mass, 0.981. Um, so our actual amount of moles is 0.682 moles. Multiply that times this, times 10.7. Um, and we are going to get 7.3 
kilojoules per mole. Actually, well, 7.3 kilojoules. So, so what we did is we took the amount of moles we had here in the 18.4 grams of aluminum, divided it, so now we have 7.3. So that's actually 7.3 kilojoules is going to be the total amount of energy it's going to take us to go from here to here. So we have 17.3 uh, kilojoules, and uh, we have a total temperature of, um, if we look at the actual freezing point, of this, it's 660 degrees Celsius. Now we have to use Kelvin because this is all based off of Kelvin. And uh, we're looking right now at uh, the third law of thermodynamics. And so um, we have to use Kelvin, it's all based off of that. So we have to add 273 to the Celsius. So 7.3 divided by 660 plus 273 is gonna give us our answer. And so our answer is 0 0.00782. Um, now, this is kilojoules per degrees Kelvin for this particular equation. We had kilojoules up here, and we had, actually, remember, we converted this to Kelvin down below. Entropy, though, is expressed as joules per degree Kelvin. So to convert this to joules from kilojoules, just divide by 1,000. So we're going to have 7.82 joules per degree Kelvin. You can see 7.82, a lot easier number to work with than this which is why they use, um, they use uh, joules instead of, instead of kilojoules. All right, uh, let's look at uh, one more quick little thing. Um, standard molar entropies, um, everything has a standard molar entropy and it's actually based off of a 25 degrees Celsius and one ATM. But uh, a lot of times you need to look that up, you need to use it, it uh, never changes. Um, now, if I'm going to compare, this is the iodine molecule. Look at iodine molecule in all three places. We have solid, liquid, and gas. As you can see, um, the standard molar entropy, if you look it up in the back of the book, as we go from here to here, we have an increase in entropy as we go from solid to liquid. A significant increase in entropy, but as you go from uh, liquid to gas, you have an even greater increase in entropy as you go from 180 to 260. So uh, once again showing you that that, um, that increase right there from liquid to gas is the greatest uh, amount of increase. So there's obviously a much higher state of entropy with iodine gas than there is with solid iodine. And that's something you can look up in the back of the book. We'll use for later equations. So keep that in the back of your mind.